Here we have the inside of the Eldest Majestic 175. If we firstly come to the main control panel, you'll see that we can turn the 12 volt on just here. Once we've done this, we then have lights, which will turn on the top lighting just here. All of the other lighting can be turned on and off on its own switches. Next we have the awning light on and off, water pump on and off. Whenever the water pump is in operation, the green light will illuminate to let you know. The red light will illuminate whenever the grey water tank needs emptying. And then beneath the pump switch we then have the tank heater switch. Both fresh and waste tanks are fitted with tank heaters. If this switch is on and there is water in the tanks and the outside temperature drops below about 3-4 degrees, the tank heaters would automatically come on to avoid frost damage. At the moment this is giving us a voltage reading of the leisure battery. If I want to know how much water is in the fresh tank we then go by the blue gauge just here hold down the water button beneath it we then have the control panel for the whale heating and hot water system you'll see they're currently both in the off position just here if we start with the water heater all we now do is just keep pressing the button and you will see it goes over a series of icons until returning back to off if we start with the first icon, it's a little picture of a snowflake and that's the boiler's frost protection mode. If you have water in the boiler but you don't necessarily want to be heating it, you can put it into this mode here and similar to the tank heaters, if the outside temperature drops below 3-4 degrees, it will come on to avoid frost damage. Next we have a single wavy line. Wavy lines represent mains electricity, so we're now heating hot water at about one kilowatt. Next two wavy lines so about two kilowatts so just dependent on the ampage of the site you're on to stop yourself from tripping. If we have no mains we can run on gas with a little picture of the flame and if we have both, both power sources available to us we can put it into dual fuel mode so we can run on a mixture of gas and mains at one kilowatt and a mixture of gas and mains at 2 kilowatts. This setting here is especially handy in the winter months if you want to get up to temperature nice and quickly. Whenever the unit is consuming gas the little flame icon will appear here to let you know. If there's a problem with the water heater in any shape or form a little red exclamation mark will appear where my finger is just here and then if you hold the water heater button in you will get a series of little red dashes appear down here and then depending on the number of them will depict the error code. If you look in the manual it will then tell you what the problem is. Nine times out of ten it will be something relatively easy like I do not have gas, I do not have main supply etc. Once you have rectified the problem you will need to reset the control panel. If it's a water heater problem you hold the water heater button in and then press the plus button together. It will then clear it down. If it is a heating issue, obviously you hold the heater button in and again press the plus button together. If we now go to the heating, again you will see as I press, it will go over the series of icons until eventually ending back at off. First icon, wavy line, so yes, mains electricity again, but this time at about 500 watts. Then we have main supply at 1 kilowatt and then main supply again at 2 kilowatts. We then go over to gas only and then we have the dual fuel mode again. Temperature setting on the plus and minus just here and again whenever the heating is consuming gas you will get a flame icon just appear here. Whale recommends setting the thermostat down to this little moon here for night mode. So if you need your heating on whilst you're asleep, 
This is a low heat, but secondly, the fan will also be a little bit quieter. And if it's just a hot day and you just want to circulate the air, you can drop it all the way down to here, to the little snowflake, and it will just push the air about. If we now come to the bench seat just here and we remove the cushions and we now lift this section up, you will see the location of the boiler itself. So we have the boiler drain valve just here. So to drain the boiler down for winterization, firstly make sure the water pump is turned off open up all of the taps around the van and then flick this across like so. This will then drain the system down. To refill the system, close it back up again, fill up your fresh water tank, close all the taps, turn the water pump on and then the system will start to prime itself back up again. After a few minutes, open your taps again. I usually then turn them to the hot setting They'll cough and splutter as they force the air out of the system. Once they're running freely, then turn to the cold again, force the air out, wait until the water's running freely and then close, and then the system will fully prime itself back up again. Returning back to the red exclamation mark and the error code setting, if you've done the reset a couple of times and it hasn't worked, you can always attempt the hard reset and if I just move this multi-plug out of the way just here, you'll see this little red button, which is the unit's hard reset. If you press this a few times, it will then clear the error code again, and nine times out of 10, the system will then fully restore itself. Here we have the location for the heating. Again, this does have a hard reset, and it's tucked down between the middle of these two pipes just here I don't know if I can get it into shot but it is just down down this part down here also in here we have the gas isolation tap for the boiler it is in the on position and can stay like that like all of the gas taps in the motorhome if you do smell gas I always say just go to the source and turn the gas bottle off Again, underneath this side's bench seat, we have storage. We also have the back of the battery box. So just located here. At this point here, we have the main 12 volt fuse just here. And then if we close this back up again, and then come to this point just here, We then have the consumer unit. So we have the individual MCBs just here all labelled up, the main RCD and test button. So if something's not working on main supply, just come in here to check to see whether or not you've tripped. And then we have the 12 volt fuses just here. And again, they're all labelled up. So if something's not working on 12 volt, just check to see whether or not you've blown a fuse. Mm -hmm. Above the microwave, we have the location of the solar panel regulator. So we don't need to do anything with the solar panel regulator, it just lets us know what it's up to. So you'll see at the moment there is a solid green light on, letting us know that the leisure battery is fully charged. Whenever the solar panel is popping a charge into the battery, it will steadily flash. Also in here, we have the plug point for the microwave. With the microwave, I always suggest removing the contents for travel. This is an eco microwave, so you will need to press this eco button here first of all to turn it on. Then we have quick start just here and stop. 
Time setting just here. Auto cook at the top. Timer, defrost, etc. All there. Beneath it is the Dometic fridge freezer. On and off just here. We're currently running on main supply with a little picture of the two pin plug. If we want to run it on gas, just press the flame button. These fridges automatically ignite themselves, so we do not need to do anything else. If it did fail to light, and it may just be down to the simple fact there might be a bit of air in the system, especially when you put a new gas bottle on, you can press this little button here, and it will then allow the fridge to attempt to light itself again. Last one is 12 volt maintain, and if I press this at the moment, we will get a little red flashing light just here because the engine isn't running. So we cannot keep the fridge cold whilst on the move until the engine has been started. Temperature control just here. And then if we then push down, we can then open the door. And we have the freezer compartment just here. This is fully removable. And you will find the clip here and here to hold the fridge door in a jar when you're not using the motorhome to allow it to vent just push this section in here and then slide out and this will then allow the door to be held on a jar above my head here we have the omni vent fan to use this wind the roof vent open at this point here fan on and off just here and then we have variable fan speed extraction cooling Do make sure the roof vent is down for travel. Also in the roof we have the PIR sensor for the alarm. Just press this button every now and then and the red light will flash. We're basically just checking that it's working because it is wireless and requires batteries. The smoke alarm and carbon monoxide alarm also require batteries so again just press the test buttons every now and then to make sure that they are working. Next we have the hob, so we have the electric hot plate just here that will work on main supply and operates just here. Red light comes on to let you know it's in operation. Everything else is gas and it's push in, twist and then press the igniter just here. Beneath it we have the grill and again just push in, twist and then press the igniter. And then lastly the oven. Beneath it we have gas isolation taps for the hob and the oven. And then this side we have the plug for the hot plate. If we now come to the washroom we have the basin.
and then the Fetford toilet. Try open to the cassette, just slide the grey lever just here. Push the flush on top. Level indicator just here to let you know when it needs emptying. And then close to the cassette again just here. If this has been left open and you try to remove the cassette from the outside, it will not come out. So if you feel resistance, do make sure that nobody's left this open. We then have the shower cubicle just here. And the wardrobe with the chest of drawers and the freestanding table.